Guys, you know, uh, I know we, we, we went through Morgan Stanley, but I do want to just come back to what we talked about at the top of the show, Carl, briefly here. We can talk about it a bit more. But they did, of course, uh, Jim, uh, suffer a $911 million loss from Archegos. They, they, now, they didn't tell yeah. us at the time, unlike Nomura, yeah. which put a statement out $2 billion, unlike Credit Suisse, which eventually admitted $4.7 billion, at least that's what we think the total was. Of course, they still continue to sell some stock prior to even giving us that number. Uh, but Gorman did comment on it um, on the call, uh, and here's what he more or less said. It resulted in a net loss of $644 million. That represents the amount the client owed us under the transactions. They failed to pay that back, uh, and we made a management decision to completely de-risk the remaining smaller, long, and short positions. He went on to say we thought that was the best, uh, you know, re reduce risk as rapidly as possible. In so doing, they had another $267 million dollar loss. Now, it is in some contrast to Goldman Sachs, which doesn't seem to have suffered much there, perhaps moving more quickly to just get those default documents ready uh, for the second it was happening and then, boom, selling him out. At the same time, Morgan Stanley was the lead underwriter, of course, of what may have caused, in part, the entire implosion to begin with, that, uh, that stock sale at Viacom of, at $85 a share. Interesting, of course, prime broker getting ready at Morgan Stanley to sell stuff out at the same time. Uh, they're selling stock that they thought originally Archegos might actually step up to buy a lot of. Of course, that ended up not being the case. Um, there is a firewall there, although you have to believe at the senior levels of management, they certainly knew what was going on in capital markets and in the prime brokers, Jim. Very interesting. Yeah, look, I, this, is, uh, and this is the disaster that keeps giving, David. I yeah. mean, I... I was shocked at the $911 million. I, I had thought that Morgan Stanley acted with alacrity, but uh, this thing was just a, a disease. It was a pandemic. This guy, remember, this was the guy who had the mental quarantine, David. And there's still people who want to give him money. Julian Robertson says he's willing to give him money. Well, you know what? He should give him money so he can repay Morgan Stanley. Uh, yeah, the losses, I mean, we can, you know, it's almost a billion at Morgan Stanley, two billion at Nomura, 4.7 billion at Credit Suisse. And then there are many other firms that haven't, maybe the numbers aren't quite as large, but. This was just a complete and total disaster. And as you say, I like it mentally quarantined. Something went very wrong here. Right. Uh, and, Carl, we're still, right. How about we're the still fact digging that on it. JP Morgan was totally on to the guy. JP Morgan, totally yeah. on to the guy. You think Not so? I don't like what they were doing. They didn't just uh, get they, lucky. They, they didn't just get lucky. Yes. They really did put it through the risk management and said, well, nah, this is not the guy. I, I, well, all right, maybe. Well, they could be. I'm sure they'll say, David, of course, maybe, of course maybe, Morgan, we did. maybe JP Morgan's, they're joshing me. No, David, they didn't do. They were. I mean, they didn't do business with him. I'm just saying it's it's nice to say. Oh yeah, we definitely knew it they was because he was. You know, it was. They got record. lucky. I like that. And they didn't. They didn't trust Madoff. They got lucky on that. Boy, Jamie Dimon gets lucky. He's lucky, ja lucky Jamie. You think he was making? Lucky you Jamie? think he was making decisions on this guy? Really? You think it came up to him? Maybe. Oh. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.